Hey guys, in this short video, let us learn about uh, differences between caput succedaneum cephal hematoma. And I have got you three different images which are important for uh, both neat PG and INISET. So here I am to simplify this topic. Uh, you must have read this topic by now several times, but we always tend to confuse and mark the wrong one when they give it in the form of a question. So I am here to simplify that for you. And uh, yeah. Let me uh, introduce you to my uh, Telegram channel. So we have a Telegram channel uh, which is at the rate natural Nairobi. You can join the channel and ask the topics of your difficulty there. I'll uh, do the mnemonic video. So this topic was also requested by uh, one of the aspirants. So I have made this video. So you can ask your topics of difficulty there. And this is our YouTube channel. Please do subscribe to the channel and share the videos among your friends if you like this content. And if you find these videos helpful for your neat PG preparation journey, please do support me by uh, helping me in growing the channel. So these are the two questions. Uh, let us solve these questions at the end of this session, guys. Firstly, uh, let us enter into the topic proper. So caput succedaneum versus cephal hematoma. Let me give you one single mnemonic which helps you crack this table. So caput succedaneum, one second, caput succedaneum, right? This is the spelling. So from this spelling, uh, let me derive the mnemonic. So C and C is for crosses and SU here is the suture line, right? So caput succedaneum is a swelling which crosses the suture line and ED here is for edema. It is an edematous collection. It is nothing related to blood. It is an edematous collection in the layers of the scalp. It is an edematous collection in the layers of the scalp. And then uh, let me change the color. So here you have D and A, right? So this D and A succeed danium. You, you are pronouncing it as day, right? So remember uh, something related to days. That means this edematous swelling gets absorbed within few days. Okay, so let me uh, help you find this mnemonic in this table. So look at this, guys. Uh, it crosses the suture line, I said, right? It crosses the suture line. So CC and SU is done. And it uh, is the edematous collection, okay? Th this is due to the prolonged labor, which causes venous stasis. And there is a collection of the fluid, which is called as edema. So ED edema is done. And this edema gets absorbed in two to three four days okay da is for days which is two to four days when you compare these three points with the opposite one that is cephal hematoma so look at here it is due to the name itself tells that hematoma is something related to blood right so you need to have the rupture of blood vessels so here you have this rupture of emissary veins in the skull that causes cephal hematoma and here it does not cross the suture line look at this point succedaneum crosses the suture line and cephal hematoma do not cross the suture line and here it is in days so the opposite one that is cephal hematoma should be in weeks to months so i think these three points are clear from both sides now uh, see this point guys so both of the names are starting with c but caput succedaneum has a after c and here you have e so a is the first letter right so everything first comes so everything immediately comes here so the appearance is immediately after the birth whereas for cephal hematoma e is the second like fifth letter which comes after a right so it takes some time so several hours after birth this appears this is an important question okay it appears immediately after birth succedaneum whereas cephal hematoma occurs several hours after the birth since uh, it is a mild condition just it is an edematous collection it gets resolved by itself so there is no treatment required uh, be because it is related to blood if uh, there occurs a lot uh, if it takes a lot of time to absorb then what happens is uh, it may result in neonatal ja jaundice because uh, the blood uh, stasis there uh, the heme may break down and there will be increased production of bilirubin so neonatal jaundice can occur in cephal hematoma so you need to give this support to treatment in cephal hematoma so i think i have made these points clear for you now let me uh, explain you the images so the first one is caput succedaneum so look at this case this is the brain parenchyma for you and this is the skull bone okay this is the skull bone and above and below this yellow colored skull bone you have this white colored layer right? so look at this the dotted ones that is called as periosteum guys it is present on both the sides okay I think uh, you can appreciate right see look at this this white line above and below is the periosteum and here you have caput succedaneum in the layers of the scalp 
so i am uh, i have uh, told you this labeling because you need to know that caput succedaneum is way above this periosteal layer okay it is just present in the scar players whereas when you see the cephal hematoma guys the cephal hematoma is present just below the periosteal layer so look at this guys this is the uh, this yellow color one is the skull bone as discussed so this is the periosteum on inside this is the periosteum outside so look at this white i'm tracing it out it is elevated here so look at this it is elevated so the cephal hematoma collection the blood collection is below the periosteal layer and above the skull bone so above the skull bone and below the periosteal layer that is the important point guys so scapid succedaneum is not related to periosteum it is way above the periosteum whereas cephal hematoma is just present below the periosteal layer and above the skull bone pro uh, skull bone proper so this is the image for you okay uh, this skull bone here is parietal bone and the periosteum is labeled this is the skull players in this skull players you will see the caput succedaneum and this is the gallial eponeurosis it is otherwise called as epicranial eponeurosis so this is an important diagram with labelings for you and to re-emphasize that point i have got you another image also so here is the image for you so this is the brain parenchyma and the blue color layer is the dura matter this yellow colored one is the skull bone which is porous in nature you can see the pores here and the two white layers look at this the two white layers here is the periosteum so trace the periosteum guys this is the periosteum when you trace it it is elevated here right so there is a collection here so without any doubt just below the periosteum the collection that you have will be cephal hematoma so let us find if it is right or not see look at here this arrow mark is cephal hematoma you are getting my point right how to find in the images now when you look at this uh, scalp so this is the scalp these are the layers of the scalp you just have this edematous collection here that is uh, called as caput succedaneum so yeah that is also right caput succedaneum and right below the periosteum this white color layer you have the cephal hematoma and one more point to differentiate between cephal hematoma and caput succedaneum is see guys this is the suture line this midline is the suture line okay so caput succedaneum is crossing the suture line let me label it with another color uh, see the caput succedaneum is crossing the suture line right whereas the cephal hematoma is not crossing the suture it is just confined to this hemisphere it is not crossing in the above images also if this is the suture line caput succedaneum is crossing the suture line whereas cephal hematoma is just not crossing it is just belonging to one hemisphere that is also uh, discussed in this mnemonic right crosses and not crosses and there are two another terms that you need to know one is subgalial hemorrhage and the epidural hemorrhage epidural hemorrhage as all of us know uh, it is uh, due to traumatic conditions right mostly due to traumatic conditions this epidural hemorrhage is right below the uh, skull bone like right above the dura mater guys so look at here here you have the skull bone right and here in this uh, region you will have this epidural hemorrhage so look at this image this is the dura mater and this is the skull bone so you have the epidural hemorrhage here and coming to subgallial hemorrhage this sky blue colored line is called as gallial eponeurosis guys so this is called as the sky blue line here is gallial eponeurosis epicranial or gallial is one and the same so below that you have the subgallial space in the subgallial space the hemorrhage that you get is called as subgallial hemorrhage so these are the four important uh, swellings of the skull among that also caput succedaneum and cephal hematoma are important now let us solve these questions first question i'll solve for you and the next question you answer me in the comment section for sure because if you don't answer in the comment section i will not get to know if you understood the topic or not guys so please do answer in the comment section of youtube first question here is the primary gravida delivered a full term baby by assisted forceps delivery okay and here he gave the next day you noticed a swelling so this next day is a clincher point you notice the swelling over the infant state limited by the sutures line is another clincher so these two points you need to come to your diagnosis so next day that means it is not immediate so it might be cephal hematoma for caput succedaneum to be the answer it should be immediately after the birth but here he said next day so mostly it is cephal hematoma and another point which re-emphasizes the cephal hematoma is it is limited that means it do not cross the suture line that is cephal hematoma if it crosses the suture line that should be caput succedaneum so here he is asking what is true regarding cephal hematoma let us read the options it is usually present immediately after birth no right 
So immediately after birth, the point should be succedaneum. It may cause jaundice. Yeah, cephalhematoma causes jaundice. So this should be the answer. Let us read last two options also. It contains edematous fluid. No, edematous is succedaneum succedaneum right edematous and it crosses the suture line no crossing the suture line is also for succedaneum so answer is b for you b is something uh, b is the option related to cephal hematoma now solve this question for me guys i'll be seeing uh, i'll be i'll be looking forward for your answers in the comment section you notice a uh, reddish scalp swelling in the newborn born by vacuum extraction which is not a characteristic of this condition so in this question you have this limited information regarding if it is cephal hematoma or succedaneum you don't know in that cases look at the option guys three options will be pointing towards one diagnosis and one will be odd one out and that will be your answer so that is the clue i am giving so please do answer in the comment section thank you if you are new to this channel let me introduce my telegram channel to you so all you have to do is uh, watch the screen recorded video and follow the steps that I tell you. So firstly you have to go to the telegram app and in the search box type at the rate nutshell Nairobi. So do not forget to type at the rate. After typing at the rate nutshell Nairobi you will get to a group called Nairobi's nutshell channel. You click on that join in the group. So this is our group guys where regularly I post the MCQs, PYQs and the high yield topics for uh, NEET and ENISET. So people also ask their topics of difficulty in my channel. There in the pinned message above if you click on that you will get subject wise videos. Click on any of the subject wise video. Uh, topic and you will get directed to the youtube like this and you can watch the youtube video and subscribe to the youtube channel also guys and uh, share it among your friends please do like share and subscribe to both telegram and youtube channels thank you